Quick trigger warning for the video, I will be discussing suicide, so if that makes you uncomfortable, consider watching something else. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about something called catatonia. It's a symptom of several psychiatric disorders, one of them being schizoaffective disorder, which is something I'm personally diagnosed with. It means that I experience symptoms of schizophrenia, such as delusions and hallucinations, but also symptoms of a mood disorder, which for me is full bipolar one. Catatonia in itself is an extremely rare thing to occur, even in psychiatric conditions. In the United States alone, every year they maybe get somewhere close to 20,000 cases. And when you think that the United States has over 300 million people, that's quite a small number. But what exactly is catatonia? Well, it's a complex syndrome of motor abnormality, usually presenting itself in the form of immobility and mutism, though psychomotor agitation may also occur. It is believed to be a response to intense fear or anxiety, but not all who face catatonia experience this. It was first described by Carl Kalbaum in the 1870s and persists to this day. So now that I've told you a little bit about what catatonia is, what exactly is it like to experience it? And this is where story time comes into play. So I was in my sophomore year of college when I had my first true catatonic episode. A week prior to the episode, someone jumped off the roof of my dorm and killed themselves. It was 10 stories and it really shook up the whole campus and it definitely shook up me. I was in therapy for like a couple days in a row. I didn't go to some classes. I mean, it really, it really hit me, hit me hard. And the main reason I'm mentioning this is because it affected the initial diagnosis, but I'll get to that. So it was a late Saturday night when this happened. I was playing Minecraft with friends. I wasn't really thinking about the suicide or anything. Literally, there wasn't really much stress in my life at all. I was just having a good time and relaxing. And then out of nowhere, I had a panic attack that landed me in the ER. I'd never had one before. I didn't know that they could come out of nowhere. I didn't really know anything. So I was really scared, really freaking out. And yeah, I ended up in the hospital. I couldn't control my breathing. I couldn't calm down. My roommate was trying to get me to breathe better. Um, but I just, I just couldn't do anything. And part of me was like, I didn't feel like I was dying, but I felt like something was seriously, seriously wrong. Like I couldn't get anything under control. My brain was just cycling through like all this, like I was afraid, I was pretty afraid. And then without warning, everything stopped. I could still breathe, but I couldn't control my breathing. I could still blink, but I couldn't control when I blinked. Couldn't focus my eyes. And worst of all, I could not move a single muscle in my body. I tried to wiggle my big toe, I tried to move my fingers, I tried to turn my head, I even tried to focus my eyes and maybe move my eyes around, couldn't do that either. It was very, 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 very freaky. My first thought when this happened was that I had a stroke and I was paralyzed because I'd heard stories of people who had had strokes and then couldn't move like one side of their body, that kind of thing. So that's immediately where my mind went, in the midst of all the pure panic. So I'm frozen thinking that I'm gonna be stuck like this forever, and finally someone notices me. So they take me from the waiting room to the triage bay in the ER, and they start asking me questions, trying to get me to respond. Of course, I'm not responding because I'm frozen. They're trying to figure out if I'm faking it by like rubbing their knuckles across my collarbone to incite a pain response. And again, I couldn't move. So I was just like screaming, ouch, ouch, ouch in the inside, but I couldn't do anything on the outside. They asked my roommate what was going on when the whole thing happened. And she tried the best of her ability to explain things. It was already very stressful for everyone involved. And so once that was done, they wheeled me back to the main part of the ER, but I didn't get a room, they just kind of rolled me to the middle of it and left me there. So while I was thinking I was paralyzed and potentially dying, no one was talking to me, no one was checking in on me, which I thought was kind of weird given that I was extremely worried about my condition. But what exactly was actually going on inside my head? Well, I wasn't alone, that's for sure. I had my voices to talk to, which was extremely helpful in the situation. We were all freaking out, but no one in the real world came to check in on me. And the thing is, yes, I was unresponsive. I couldn't talk, I couldn't move my eyes. Like, you know, I was just kind of frozen. But the thing is, like, I was still very active up here. I still had full range of thinking and everything. I still had like my emotions and whatnot. I was still entirely aware of what was going on around me. And that's contrary to what a lot of people think of when they either see a video of someone who's catatonic or like they hear about it. You, you wouldn't think that the person would really be like awake and aware on the inside. And I still, while I couldn't move my eyes or anything, I still like had peripheral vision and whatnot. I knew when people were walking, I could still hear things just fine. I was just stuck like with motor issues, not mental issues, motor issues. 
And also this whole time I had this sense of calm and peace over me in the midst of the absolute sheer anxiety I was feeling. So it's almost like I couldn't necessarily have another panic attack. It was that kind of thing. Like it kind of kept me from doing that. But at the same time, I was still freaking out because again, I was frozen and couldn't move. And it just got scarier and scarier the longer I was stuck like this. I kept trying to move my legs, move my arms, move my fingers, move my toes, and none of it worked. And I tried to focus on other things besides the impending doom I felt that I was gonna be stuck like that forever. It was just, it was horrible. And no one, again, no one came to check on me. No doctors did anything. They didn't hook me up to anything. They just left me sitting there, didn't talk. I mean, good Lord, was I in a coma? I, I just didn't, I didn't know anything. But just as quickly as it came, it lifted, it was gone. I could move my legs, my arms. I jumped up out of my chair and I'm like, I can move again. And I could control my breathing. I took so many deep breaths and it was just this immediate gratitude that it was over, this full on relief that I could move again. Like, oh my goodness, I could move again. I could move my legs and my arms, I could walk, I could talk, I could control my breathing, I could focus my eyes, everything that I couldn't do for the last, I don't know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes? I don't actually know how much time passed. And of course my roommate was even more freaked out because I went from an unresponsive potato to normal kit, like nothing had ever happened. And it was of course also a wild experience for me because I was that unresponsive potato and now I could move again? Like what on earth was that? Eventually the doctor came in and he asked me first off if I had experienced anything traumatic recently. And of course I mentioned the guy jumping off the roof of my dorm. That was the big thing that had happened to me in the last week. And so because of that he diagnosed what happened to me as something called a conversion reaction. And conversion reactions are part of a greater thing called conversion disorder, which is when your brain takes um, very powerful emotions and feelings and trauma and whatnot and turns them into physical symptoms that your body can deal with. So someone might go blind from grief for a bit or lose control of one of their legs. Like their leg might go paralyzed for a while. I grab my arm, that's funny. But rarely, rarely is it full body paralysis. So that didn't sit right with me right off the bat. And of course I told my psychiatrist about this. I said, hey, this guy jumped off the dorm and I ended up in the ER for a panic attack and they said I had a conversion reaction. And I described my symptoms to him, how I had the full body paralysis and couldn't talk and was extremely unresponsive. And he diagnosed me with catatonia instead of conversion disorder because it fit that classical model model of catatonic stupor that Carl Kalbaum described in the 1870s. So in a way, conversion disorder and catatonia do have a very thin line between them, but it was just because I fit the textbook definition of catatonia that I was diagnosed with that. And my doctor did actually give me advice on how to deal with future episodes because catatonia is actually a symptom of all of the psychiatric diagnoses I've had. So he told me that when it does happen again, to not fight it, to just let it happen. Because in some cultures in other countries, catatonia is actually viewed as a reset button in a way. And the thing is, I would go on to have many more episodes. They became a regular part of my episodes. And one thing I have learned over the years is that if I do have a panic attack, it will end in a catatonic episode. And it's a really weird way to end a panic attack. Like it's not, I don't end it through breathing exercises and meditation. I end it by my body literally shutting down for 10 minutes, but I'll take it, I'll take it. Anyway, that's all for this video. That's my first catatonic episode. If you like guys like this video, I can talk more about my episodes. Do let me know in the comments down below or talk to me on Instagram at schizokizzo. I love talking to you guys about mental health and I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>